Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Day Gamers, and welcome. So today is Tuesday, and from what I can tell, Tuesday seems to be the update day for Medieval Engineers, so let's actually have a look at what we get in our hands on this week. Well, it is quite exciting, we've had survival elements added, and we've also had lighting, so we can change the day and night cycle. So let's switch it to night, so bringing up this menu by pressing K, we have a structural integrity view like we've had before. We've got remove fractures that I'll show you a little bit later on. And we have night mode. So there we go. We've got a full moon night. Well, well, almost a full moon. And you can see it's very dark. Now let's head into this forest. Because you can see it's very dark. And we've got these little fire pits illuminating the areas. And I'll show you some of the differences. So now these fire pits and different sorts of fire posts, you could even say, give off different amounts of light. And what I can actually tell is... The actual burning logs in this metal sort of um, cage tend to give off the most light. And this um, sort of fire pole gives off the second amount. And then finally you've got the fire here that gives off very little. And you can see it's just smoking away right there. And now if we head inside the bandit's hideout that is here, I've lit this place up. And you can actually see how this looks as we enter. So we've got poles here. It's, it's still a very dark environment, and, and for that time frame, I guess it would be very dark. So if we press K again, and we switch it back to daylight, you can see how it actually is, and some of the light is still given off. And if we switch it back to night, you can actually see how we've lost a lot of the light. It doesn't make too much sense in a cave at the moment, but still very cool. So if we head into one of the side rooms, we'll be able to see how the light actually works and reflects around the room, lighting it up very well. Looks really cool, and let's just alternate back. So that's daytime. You can see this is the heat pulsing off. It really is the sort of dark ages, though. It's really cool. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the other features. So now that we've seen the darkness, and we can disable on night mode and get a nice sunny day, let's actually have a look at some of the new blocks that have been introduced. Now, first off, if we head to the G menu, we can see that we have got this stone slope that is displayed here. I've added some different parts on it. And by mouse wheeling, we can change it to two different angles to build up more sorts of fortifications for our castles. And if we place one of them there, we also have a new angled sort of fortification. You can see we've got stone battlement slope and we've got the stone battlement slope long. And you can see as we rotate these, we can actually get one for both sides of the actual walkway like so, so we can have some really nice stone walkways, and we've also got the smaller version here itself for the more steep areas like we've added on the side here of these staircase. Really cool, really cool indeed. Now this is what got me even more excited, rope. Let's actually go around here. We have basic rope, and we have terrible rope. And what exactly is terrible rope, you're probably wondering. Well, that's rope that actually snaps if something walks between it. So if I walk between this rope, the rope snaps. And now I'll show you that. I'll add this to my taskbar. So this just works as usual. And I can grab a one and I click to add the rope to that one. I click again. And then we've added some terrible rope to that band. Now if we add number two, that is the proper really nice rope. This won't break when things pass through it. We can pass through these all day. Really cool, really cool indeed. Now this is something else I want to show you. This is basically a detachment loop. And if I go to my G menu and back to all blocks and find the rope ending and I mouse wheel you'll see that we've actually got this detachment loop available to us now we've actually knocked over the post with the weight of it so let's actually aim at it and press K so pressing K on this will show us the rope release settings so this brings this little road cone you can see here at the bottom we'll just bring it up into the shot a bit and you can see this is the release threshold so anything that is hooked up to this when it enters this sort of cone will detach and I'll show you even a better example. So a better example of this new rope detachment feature is this French trebuchet that we've got over here. If I head over and press K on the actual hook, if we can find it, you can see that we've got the release angle set here and we can adjust this and we're just gonna tilt it down a little bit. And by doing this, we can actually change how this boulder or this stone ball is actually gonna fly. So we're gonna release this hook and as it speeds up to speed, it's gonna detach itself and throw itself over in that direction. So this means we can make some really interesting sort of trebuchet designs now, really exciting. So the next thing I wanna show you is another feature of the K menu, and it's not the night mode this time. You can see the castle a little bit in the dark there. It's actually this remove fractures. So if we go inside this castle here, we can see that we've got a lot of damaged sort of blocks. And when you're constructing something and you have a little bit of a structural problem, you end up with rubble almost everywhere. And you don't want your castle looking like this at all. You don't have to clean it up. 
So we're going to go to the K menu here and we're going to put remove all fractures. So this removes everything and this just removes it in a radius. So let's remove it in a three meter radius. So as you can see, that little bit close to us disappeared. And if we increase this to about eight, other pieces will start to disappear. And we increase this a little bit further, 13, you'll see all that has disappeared up at the top. Now there's still rubble and different bits of clutter around here. So let's just clean this up completely by pressing all. And you can see how that's just wiped that away. Perfect for reconstructing the area after a structural sort of failure. So another feature of this patch that is very useful is this max fracture pieces. So if we increase this to maximum, what you'll notice is that the walls fracture into loads more pieces. But if you've got a very sort of weaker PC, not something that's high end, you don't have problems with that. It's going to cause a drop in frame rate and so on. So you'd actually be able to turn this down. And as you'll notice, there'll actually be less pieces when it fractures. And it's going to be a lot more capable for a PC at the lower end of the spectrum. So now we're actually in survival mode and the main difference in survival mode is that you can actually die and if I try to fly I'm not going to be able to fly plus I'm being pursued by a horde of very angry barbarians so we're going to have to see if we can get away from them. You can see the barbarians have actually had a little bit of an upgrade in the clothing and as this one is pursuing me I'm going to let him actually kill me as you can see as he beats me to death my health starts to flash and eventually my health becomes critical and I die myself. Now, when you do die, you don't have to respawn in any fancy area. You just respawn at your start point from what it seems at the moment in time. So why I attempt to um, bring up this drawbridge and save myself from all these barbarians, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.